Howdy and welcome to the Confidence Through Health podcast. I'm Jerry Snyder. As an elite level athlete, owner of All In Health and Wellness, and author of the book Confidence Through Health, my goal is to help you achieve your goals and dreams using health as the conduit to get there. I want to thank the Texas Farm Box for being a new sponsor to the Confidence Through Health podcast. If you want farm fresh food delivered to your door, Texas Farm Box is here for you. We curate boxes from Central Texas and North Texas farms to bring you the best in all of these things. Check this out. Produce, beef, chicken, pork, eggs, dairy, and so much more. If you want to eat healthy, support local, and enjoy the convenience of delivery, Texas Farm Box is for you. Think inside the box. Click the link in the show notes or go to texasfarmbox.com to learn more. Howdy, I'm Jerry Snyder, the host of Confidence Through Health. If you're coming for the first time, I appreciate you checking it out. Hopefully you will learn something. Um, and uh, there's a lot of episodes you can go back and check out. If you're a returning listener, I appreciate your loyalty. Uh, please check us out on you know, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you are checking out your, your podcast. Share us with your friends. Um, if you feel that this is something that they could uh, learn something from. So today, this episode, I want to talk about your taste buds and how that could be really the, the issue with uh, changing your nutrition plan. And if you're already eating a healthy nutrition plan, if you're already following a, a healthy plan that's going to give you the nutrients and the fuel that your body needs to thrive and be healthy, your taste buds typically won't be an issue until you hit them with something that is overly sugar, overly processed, that's going to give you a massive dopamine hit right away. And dopamine is a neurotransmitter in your brain that signals pleasure. And so those super sugary, like, you know, sodas or candy or, or cakes, and those things are super sugary and they're going to give you that huge dopamine hit right away. It's not sustainable though. And so you, that's why you get a crash because you get really excited and then you don't have any dopamine at all. And then you crash because there's just nothing to drive that excitement in your brain anymore. Typically, that's not an issue for somebody that's eating healthy already. It's just something that you have to watch for is when you do expose because if it's a celebration or it's a whatever the reason is that you decide like, hey, I'm going to go ahead and go off my normal plan and have something that I normally don't have. And you're going to spike that dopamine. You just need to be, be wary of it. But what I really want to address is where most people are. There's very few people that are in that boat. Most people are in the boat of, I am eating the, the sad American diet, the standard American diet. I am eating processed foods. I am eating lots of processed sugar. Um, I'm eating all kinds of stuff that's not providing my body, the nutrients it needs. And so my taste buds are brainwashed into thinking that's the best food because it gives me an immediate dopamine hit. It makes me feel good right away. It's not a lasting dopamine. It's not, you know, exposure that lasts for a long time. It's an immediate, it might last for five minutes or 10 minutes, maybe 20 minutes, and then you're going to crash if you don't continue to feed it. And so what happens is you get that really high, you go, oh my gosh, this feels great. This is such a great experience. This is, you know, and that's where people say that food is an experience. It's because it makes you feel great if it's got all that much sugar in it. But it's a, a, it's, it's a fake great feeling because it's all in your mind because of that dopamine rush. And as soon as that dopamine rush stops, then you're going to crash unless you keep feeding it. And when you keep feeding it, that's when you have an issue with the amount of, of food that you consume that is not helping your body. And so then your body goes into fat storage and you go down all those roads. And we, I've talked about those before, but specifically about your taste buds. So your taste buds basically get brainwashed because of the dopamine release that's associated with what you eat. So you have to be very conscious, especially if you're trying to change your meal plan to go from the standard American diet 
to a healthier plan where you're eating more vegetables and you're eating things that are not sugar coated and that are not processed. You're eating things like that. You're not going to get that immediate high dosage of dopamine exposure in your brain. You'll still get dopamine release. It'll be longer term. And what's going to happen is as your body gets the nutrients, your, your gut is going to signal to your brain, send the dopamine out because I feel good. This is the way I'm supposed to work. I feel, I feel great. My body is efficient because I'm getting nutrients to the, all the organs, all the cells, everything I need. And so you're going to get a longer term exposure of dopamine released at a slower rate instead of the immediate high dopamine hit with sugary products that has a massive crash, you're going to get a more sustained release over time. The problem is you got to get past the taste buds because the taste buds, if you eat broccoli, if you're not used to eating broccoli, if you're used to eating processed foods, donuts, if you're used to eating, you know, um, I mean, chicken fried steak that's got mashed potatoes and gravy and biscuits and none of that stuff is necessarily bad by itself. But if you're used to eating that all the time, those types of foods all the time, then what's going to happen is that you basically brainwash your taste buds to saying, I need this. I need this soda. I need these things all the time because it gives me the immediate hit and it makes me feel good in an immediacy. When reality, what we want is to feel good over a long period of time. So your taste buds are driving that. And unfortunately, you can't, unless you're going to get a feeding tube, you can't get past your taste buds. When you eat, you can't get past your taste buds. But that's why they've come out with all kinds of sugar coated and chocolate coated and, you know, all these things that are supposed to be good for you in their natural form, nuts, berries, all these things that are, but now we're going to coat them with something so that it'll get past your taste buds to get into you. The problem is, is that you're getting so much sugar in that process that you're defeating the purpose of the good nutrients. You're getting a little bit, obviously, if you're eating chocolate covered strawberries, we recently had Valentine's Day. So chocolate covered strawberries is a popular thing to have if you're a couple. And what happens is, yeah, you're getting some strawberries in there. And so you're getting some good nutrients from those, but the chocolate is giving that immediate dopamine rush. And so what happens is you eat more, you eat more than you're supposed to. More strawberries is great, but more chocolate is not, especially if it's processed highly and has a high sugar content. And if it's, if it's dark cacao chocolate, it's not as bad. Um, but the point being, we got to get past the taste buds. And that's one of the most difficult things to do. But the taste buds are brainwashed into thinking that that immediate dopamine hit is what we want out of our food. And so that's what drives us into when we taste something saying, I want more of that right now. So it's not, it's not a willpower thing because you can have all the willpower in the world and your taste buds are going to taste something and go, whoop, there we go. You know, Lay's understood this in the eighties and nineties with their campaign to say, nobody can eat just one because they knew what they put in the chips was going to cause your taste buds to say, I want more of that. And so you're going to eat one and then you're going to sit there a minute and you're going to, you're going to test out, Oh, I'm going to beat the commercial. I'm going to beat the slogan. I'm going to be able to beat Lay's. I'm going to have one and I'm going to prove to them. But the dopamine rush is so big that you go, uh, I want to, I want to experience that again. And then again, and then again, and then again. And before you know it, the bag's gone. So to, it's not a willpower thing so much as it is a discipline thing. 
And you might say those are the two, those are the, 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 those things are the same willpower and discipline. And I, I don't believe that they are discipline comes more into, are you disciplined enough to have a plan? Are you disciplined enough to follow your plan? Willpower is more in the moment. I'm not going to do that. I'm tempted and I'm not going to do that. And until you have the discipline created in your plan, you're not going to be able to most of the time hold back from that temptation when it comes to food and the, what your taste buds have driven you from. If you're just now starting to change your plan, once you're months into the process of changing your new meal plan, your nutrition plan, it becomes easier. Trust me, it becomes much easier to see something and go, yes, that would make me feel probably ecstatic for the next 10 minutes, but it's not worth it to have that rush followed by that crash. The rush is great. I don't want the crash. And I'm not going to eat the number of them that I need to eat to avoid the crash. So when you have the discipline in your plan to be able to do that, that's when you can become successful because you're now beating your taste buds. So how do you create the discipline? Well, you have to create the plan. So what's your plan? How are you going to avoid the temptation? So does that mean if you're going somewhere where, or or if you're, if you work in an office and there is every Friday, somebody brings donuts or every Friday, there's somebody provides lunch for everybody. You know, a vendor brings in lunch or every day a vendor brings in lunch and you don't have any control over what it is. And sometimes it, you know, it's often not the super healthiest self and you're trying to avoid this, that, or the other thing as a part of your plan. And somebody brings in your favorite food. It's unhealthy, but it's your favorite food because it sends your taste buds berserk. And the rush of dopamine is unbelievable because of all the comfort things and the feelings that it brings back. So how do you avoid that? You have to have a plan. And what is your plan? Well, your plan is you bring your lunch, you bring something like to snack nuts or something that's going to give you a feeling, a feeling of being full. If your trigger is sodas and you just can't beat sodas, That's a very common trigger, believe me, because they create that in the soda. They create that. It's marketing. They put it in the soda so that you can't avoid it, just like Lay's did. So how do you avoid it? Actually, one of the easiest ways to avoid drinking soda is simply to stay hydrated. So drink some water. Drink water all day long. Yes, and I've said this before. If you drink the amount of water that you're supposed to drink, you're going to go to the bathroom more often. It's a price of it. It's okay. Yes, it becomes a bit of an issue at first. And especially if you're changing your meal plan completely from I'm going away from my sad diet, the standard American diet to a healthier plan. Guess what? As you release all those toxins that you've stored up, as you release all the junk that you've stored up through eating all those unhealthy foods for so long, your body has to eliminate them, which means you got to go to the bathroom more often. It's okay. You're going to be okay. Drink more water is actually the easiest, simplest way to break from sugars because When you actually drink water, you hydrate. When you hydrate, your taste buds get, your your mouth, your salivary glands, your taste buds, everything starts working more efficiently because it can then say, okay, I can distinguish better between the good things and the bad things. Now I want to drink more water. I want to drink more things that are going to be good for me and that the taste, the sugar taste is going to be there. Okay. It's still going to be there. That craving is still going to be there. But when you drink the soda, you're going to taste the other stuff too. You're going to taste the chemicals and you're going to taste the crap that's in there. That's not good for you. And the sugar's not going to be able to mask it 
as much if you're fully hydrated. And then you're going to say, I don't really want this anymore. This doesn't taste good. This really doesn't taste good. And so you're going to be able to move off of that only if you're hydrated. If you're not hydrated, you're going to go, I need something liquid. I need something quick. That's going to give me a sugar kick also. And that soda is going to go down fairly quickly. Before you can realize how bad it tastes. The aftertaste of a soda is the chemicals and everything that's bad for you. That's saying you shouldn't have drank that. So whatever your trigger is, whatever you were worried about, when I changed my meal plan to a healthy meal meal plan, I have to avoid this situation. The easiest one, of course, is what's in your pantry. If you're trying to cut out sodas, sugar, processed foods, whatever it is, don't buy it. That's the simplest thing to do. Don't buy it. If you don't bring it home, you can't consume it at home. If somebody brings you something, your family members come over to visit and they say, oh, we're going to bring some stuff over because, you know, we're coming over and the kids are coming over. And so we're going to bring snacks for everybody. Okay. That becomes more difficult, right? Because now it's in your house and everything's there. And then they leave and they leave it there. Take it to your neighbor. Take it to a food bank. Throw it in the trash. If it's not good for you, don't just say, uh, it's okay this once. Because that once will trigger your taste buds and it will throw that dopamine hit and you'll go, oh, this is what it was like before. Oh, I just want to go back to that. And that can, that can derail you. Your mo- that can derail your momentum. So yeah, just one bite, one drink, one can derail you. It's not going to derail your health necessarily. Like one bite of something sugary is not going, like what they say, like one bite's not going to kill you. And for most people out there, like the vast majority, like 99.99999% of people, one bite of something is not going to kill them unless you choke on it or It's that last bite of, it's that last bite of 4 million whatever bites of stuff. And that's the one that throws you into the heart attack, right? But for the vast majority of people, one bite's not going to kill you. One bite can derail your health plan and lead you down the path of poor nutrition that will lead you down chronic diseases that will take your life. So it's your taste buds that are the gate to keeping things in line. Your taste buds are hugely important. And it's a battle. And I get it. It's a battle because your taste buds are going to say, I really want this. I really want that. Your nose is going to smell something. You're driving down the road and somebody's, you know, one of these restaurants is cooking something or You know, where I live, there's a a Mars facility and they make Starburst and Skittles. And and when it when they're making it at certain times of the year, when they make it, you can smell it throughout the whole town. That sweet smell of Starburst or Skittles, you can smell it throughout the whole town. And it's like, oh, boy. And I'm I, I, I will admit I have a sweet tooth. And I work really hard to avoid things because I know I don't want them in my body from a health perspective. So I work really hard to avoid sweet things. And when I smell that, I run the other way. And I know I'm like, whoop, I can't do that because that nose is going to trigger it, right? We've all experienced that. You smell something, you go, ooh, I want that right now. Let me go find it. I'm going to go somewhere and find it. I've got to have that. That's why they bake cookies when you go look at an open house. Right When you're looking for houses and you go into an open house and they bake cookies because it makes you feel like mom's place and it makes you feel like, oh, so, and it makes you hungry. It makes you feel like home and all those feelings, right? Because your nose is going to trigger those things. 
but it's your taste buds. If you can have the discipline, because your nose is only going to trigger for so long. And then if you don't do anything about it, it's going to go, ah, okay, I got used to it. I get used to the smell, right? Go into a teenage boy's room. And you're going to be like, oh my gosh, this smells horrible. And they're going to go, what are you talking about? Because they live in it. They smell it all the time. They get used to it. Okay. Your taste buds though, that's where you got to be disciplined. And so having a plan that's disciplined into this is what I'm going to do when I'm going to have this much of this. I'm going to eat these things and I'm going to avoid those things. And if you mess up, like I tell all of my clients, if you mess up, it's okay. Because one meal is not going to kill you. All it's going to do is potentially derail you and make you be a little bit more vigilant until you get back fully on the plan with your discipline. So yeah, you can go have your celebratory meal. You can go have your different things. Making sure that you come back to the plan with your discipline. Because your discipline is what's important. And if you put the things in place so that you avoid getting in that, oh, I'm caught. Now I'm out at whatever event and they've got all these goodies and I'm starving because I wasn't disciplined enough to bring enough lunch or a snack before I came or to eat a meal before I came because I knew it was going to be horrible as far as like nutrition for me. So when you do it, when you, when you set yourself up for failure, what's going to happen? You're going to fail. If you set yourself up for success with a disciplined plan, you're going to be able to overcome your taste buds. And then you're going to be able to say, following a healthy meal plan is not that hard. It's really not that hard. It's just a matter of being disciplined enough to create it. Say you're worth it to follow it and you're worth it. I believe you're worth it. And when you do it, like I said, it's not that hard because you get the confidence of it. You get the confidence of, I was able to go to this event and I was able to avoid eating whatever it was I normally have. And so I was able to avoid the pain that I feel the next morning of bloated headaches, achiness in my joints, arthritis, all the inflammation feelings that you get when you eat, when you eat a poor meal or overeat, maybe even a not so poor meal. When you do those things and you feel the consequences of it, that's what you have to remember. I don't want that. I don't want those consequences. So therefore I have to be disciplined before to be able to avoid the consequences after. For all you sports people out there, Right? How many of you have seen it happen where you go, this guy gets fouled at the end of the basketball game, goes up to do his free throws, he misses both free throws, and then afterwards he's like, I didn't practice enough on my free throws this week. If you're disciplined enough to do it beforehand, when it comes time to perform, you'll be able to do it. And performing to your meal plan when you're in an environment with a bunch of food that is not nutritionally good for you. It's all about discipline. It's all about preparation. So if you do those two things, you're going to be okay. It's not to say you can't have things. You can go off plan anytime you want to is being disciplined to get back on plan. Understanding the consequences you're going to have when you go off plan and making sure your taste buds do not take control of your food again. Once you overcome your taste buds, once you overcome the brainwashing that's going on, if you're following the sad diet, once you overcome that, don't allow that to take hold again. And you're going to be able to have Healthy meals, you're going to be able to eat and be satisfied. You're going to be able to feel great all the time versus having spikes of feeling great. And you're not going to feel as bad nearly as often 
as you do when you have those spikes of feeling great because you have the spikes of feeling bad. You're gonna, your life's going to level out as far as your health is concerned. And you're going to get healthier. And guess what? You're probably going to lose weight because you're not eating the stuff that's driving your weight up. You're eating stuff that's making you healthy. And when you become healthy, your body says, I don't need to store this extra weight anymore. I can get rid of it. It's not going to happen overnight. And it takes time, but it takes discipline of setting your plan in place and following it. So hopefully I'll be able to give you some tips. Teach those taste buds a lesson. Tell them that they're not in control. Put yourself a plan in place. Find yourself some healthy snacks to keep around for when you're tempted, especially when you're starting out because you'll be tempted. And I know there's people out there that are saying you shouldn't snack all the time and you shouldn't do this all the time. You shouldn't do that all the time when it comes to even healthy foods. The key is you got to get to the healthy foods first. And so the first step is whatever you've got to do to avoid the bad stuff. So if you have to overeat on healthy foods to avoid the bad stuff, I'm okay with that on an initial standpoint. Once you get to where your taste buds are now under your control, then you can get better at portion controlling. You can get better at identifying exactly what you need for your nutrition to make you as healthy as possible and as confident as possible because your body's healthy. Thanks for checking out the All in Health and Wellness Confidence Through Health podcast. Our goal is to use health as a conduit to help you reach your goals in life.